This video is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc. With free weekly content and free shipping on orders over $150, you can save 5% site wide by using the promo code MTGMUDSTA. If you're looking for a direct way to help the channel, please consider joining my Patreon and becoming a member of the generic Goblin Gang. Hey, gang, and welcome back. Today's game has Fred, Charles, and Corwin rejoining me, and Fred has decided to play his Sayara deck, which is focused around flyers and birds. He keeps a Dowsing Dagger. Magus of the Moat, Herald's Horn, Myriad Landscape, Commander Isha, and two planes. Charles has chosen violence, playing his Minsk and Boo deck, and he wants to attack with a bunch of hasty trampley creatures. He keeps Questing Beast, Birds of Paradise, Itali, Primal Conqueror, Three Forests, and a Berserk. I am still working on my Atrimi deck, so I brought it out and I'm hoping to mutate. I keep Demonic Tutor, An Island, Vesuvian Duplomancy, Exotic Orchard, Return of the Wild Speaker, Yavamaya Coast, and a Swamp. Last but not least, Corrin is making some pasta with his baby lasagna, aka Baba Lasaga, keeping Bayou, Gloom Shrieker, Forest, Twilight Mire, Conduit of Worlds, Thornbite Staff, and a Dark Moss Bridge. Fred wins the die roll and starts us off. He draws and plays a Myriad Landscape. Charles plays a Forest for turn and taps it for Birds of Paradise. I play a Temple of Mystery, scrying one, and bottoming it. Corwin plays a tapped Dark Moss Bridge. Fred's got a Plains for turn, and is able to cast a Cartographer's Hawk. Charles has a Forest, and just passes. I play a Yavamaya Coast, and then pay two for Talisman of Dominance, passing after that. Corwin draws and plays a Twilight Mire. He then casts a Thornbite Staff and passes back to Fred. Fred has a Castle Ardenvale which comes in untapped, and he pays 3 for Harold's Horn, choosing birds unsurprisingly, and passing to Charles. He then swings the Hawk at Corwin, dealing 2. Charles draws and plays a Forest. He's got enough for Minsk and Boo, and he gets a Boo token with it. And once the Planeswalker resolves, upticks it to give Boo 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters. Going to combat, Boo goes at me for 4 damage, which I take, and he then passes turn. I draw and play a Swamp, and then cast a Gilinra, passing to Corwin. Corwin draws and plays Bayou. He then casts Cultivate, finding a forest to play, and a swamp to his hand, and passes after that. Fred unfortunately whiffs off his Herald's Horn trigger, and draws. He goes to combat, swinging the Hawk at Corwin, and he gets to find a Plains, putting it into play, and bouncing the Hawk back to his hand. He then moves to a second main phase, and he recasts the Hawk and follows that up with a Dowsing Dagger, which as it enters, gives Corwin two zero two plant tokens, and he passes turn. Charles draws and plays a Forest. He continues to uptick Minx and Boo, and gives the token three more plus one plus one counters, before swinging in at Fred. Fred takes the seven, and after combat, Charles casts an Elder Gargaroth, and passes. I draw, and play a Forest. I then cast Demonic Tutor and go into my library, and then I find a card and put it to hand. It's a Migratory Greathorn, which I then mutate onto Gilinra, which gives me a basic land to put into play tapped, which as it mutates, lets me find a basic land to put into play tapped. After that, I pass turn. Corwin draws and plays an Urborg. He's then got enough mana for Babali Saga, and he passes to Fred. Fred whiffs on the Herald Horn trigger again, and then draws. He equips the Hawk with the Dowsing Dagger, and this time goes at me. I take the 4, with Fred getting to go and find a Plains from the Hawk, and he returns it to his hand, not to mention transform the Dowsing Dagger into the land side. In his post-combat main phase, Fred then casts Magus of the Moat, 
and he plays a planes from hand, and once more, recasts the cartographer's hawk and passes to Charles. Charles draws and plays a mountain. He's not too thrilled with that Magus of the Moat since he doesn't really have any flyers, so he decides to downtick Minx to fling Boo at the Magus, killing it, and also drawing seven cards. After that, Charles plays out a questing beast and goes to combat. He swings both creatures at Corwin, and responding to the Gargaroth trigger, Corwin casts an Assassin's Trophy and targets the questing beast. The beast is destroyed, with Charles getting a land, and Charles also decides to make a 3-3 beast token with the Elder Gargaroth trigger, and Corwin then takes the hit from the Elder. With nothing else, Charles passes. I draw and play an Exotic Orchard. I then cast my own Birds of Paradise, and mutate on Tree Me onto the Gillenrath stack, getting to find another basic from the Great Horn trigger as I mutate. I pass after that. Corwin draws and plays a Mistress Factory, and he then casts Lightning Greaves. He moves the Greaves onto Lasaga, and then animates the Factory, and then activates Lasaga, tapping her and sacrificing the Factory. This allows Corwin to draw three, gain three, and each of his opponents loses three. He then plays out a Tireless Provisioner, passing. Fred whiffs on his Herald's Horn Trigger, and he draws, and then plays a Caged Sun, naming white as it comes in. He's got enough to then cast Commander Isha, and Soyara the Falconer, passing after that with some pumped up birds. Charles draws and plays a Forest. He upticks Minx and Boo, and targets the Elder Gargaroth, and he gets to add 3 plus 1 plus counters to it. He then moves and casts Clouth before moving to combat. As he moves to his combat step, he casts Berserk on the Elder, and then swings the Gargaroth at Corwin and Clouth at me. This gets him a Clouth trigger, gaining 22 mana from it. Charles then draws a card from the Gargaroth trigger, and before moving to damage, casts Unleash Fury on the Gargaroth to double it to 38. We then move to blocks with Corwin putting the two plants in front of the massive Gargaroth, and I then take four, while Corwin has soaked up as much as he could, and drops down to three. After damage is done, Charles then casts Kazul's Fury, flinging the Gargaroth at me to take me out. Once that's done, he casts a Fiery Emancipation. He's still got enough to cast a Tally, Primal Conqueror, and as it comes in, exiles the top cards of the libraries Exiling a Song of Night and Day from Fred, a Talisman of Resilience from Corwin, and Farc Seek from himself. He casts all three spells, and once he's done finding a land, Charles then uses the remaining mana to cast Gelta, and passes to Corwin. Corwin draws, and plays a Command Tower. He gets to make a treasure token from the Tireless Provisioner, but with nothing else, has to pass to Fred. Fred gets his Herald Horn trigger and whiffs, and is hoping to draw a board wipe. He then plays out a Skull Clamp in his main phase, and then activates the Castle Ardenvale to make a token, and then clamps it. Unfortunately, we only realize afterwards that the token is actually a 2 2 because of the Cage Sun. Fred then plays an Oketra's Monument, and then a Soul Catcher's Airy. He then passes turn, and during his end step, Corwin activates La Saga, sacrificing the Dark Moss Bridge and Tireless Provisioner to meet the three permanent requirements. This has him gaining three, drawing three, and Charles and Fred lose three. Charles draws and activates a tally to transform it, and then moves to combat. He swings Cloth at Corwin and a tally at Fred, and since their damage will be tripled because of Fire Emancipation, Charles easily takes the game, and we move to another one. Game review time. The length of this game was 37 minutes and 10 seconds, and my goodness could you tell. I think Charles, despite having a pretty slow start of basically playing a land and a mana dork basically each turn, came out really well. He really didn't want to sacrifice that boo, but I think it drew him into some real gas. Not to mention, cleared the way from that Magus of the Moat. His deck did a lot of really cool stuff, and he doubled the power and toughness of a lot of his creatures, and he got to play a really cool card with Fiery Emancipation. Otrimi, on the other hand, got to mutate to find a basic twice, which wasn't particularly impactful. I've been playing it on and off, and I think I definitely need to start tweaking it a little bit more. It doesn't actually have any board wipes, which I learned yesterday, which is kind of embarrassing, 
and I think you could also benefit from having some clone creatures to make copies of my mutate stacks. Fred's Soraya deck was kind of cool to see, and it reminds me of the budget deck that Mika built me for Christmas. It runs a lot of the same cards, which are lords and pump effects like anthems, and I would say 90% of the deck has evasion with flying. There was the little snafu with the skull clamp, but I don't think it changed all that much. If he'd drawn into a board wipe, obviously that would have been a problem, but as you saw, he didn't, and then he died. Corwin actually didn't get as much of his value train going as he normally does, and considering how powerful a Thornbite Staff is in a deck like this, he actually didn't get that much benefit from it. I was also surprised he didn't activate Lasaga during his main phase to draw him three more cards and possibly find him a board wipe, but he probably knows his deck better than I do. This video wouldn't be possible without the help from my sponsors, Cool Stuff Inc., Multizone, Original Magic Art, and Alter Sleeves. But it definitely wouldn't be possible without the help from you, the viewers, and my patrons. So I just want to say thank you for watching, and to remember, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.